This is the Samsung Galaxy Express Prime, an AT&T GO phone for $129.99. Also, on the Galaxy J3 on the unlocked market, what we have here today is a full review. Customize your experience down below, and uh, let's go. Let's begin with the hardware. So on the front of the device, you're gonna find yourself a five inch Super AMOLED HD screen with a front facing two megapixel camera. At the bottom, you're gonna find yourself that home button and that is not a fingerprint scanner, menu key and a back key. And also there's nothing down there. Going over to the side, the right side, you're gonna find yourself that power lock switch and you know, a little clean plastic, plasticky metal design here. Going off to the bottom, you're gonna find yourself that micro USB port for charging and a mic jack there. Also, you're gonna find yourself the Galaxy Express Prime branding. Going up to the top, you're gonna to find yourself that five megapixel camera with a speaker and a flash. At the top of the device, you're gonna find yourself a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. And uh, taking off the back of the device, you're gonna reveal yourself a 2600 milliamp hour battery here with a nano SIM. Yes, that's nano SIM and a expansion card for 128 gigabytes. Getting into the build quality of the Express Prime, I found it to be quite nicely built, although it is plastic. The styles were pretty sturdy and the glass was also sturdy. That home button at the bottom felt really nice and clicky and tactile. Although I did find this device to be quite slippery and it did slip out of my hands a couple of times, kind of like that right there. Now, what Android version are we running? Well, we're running Android Marshmallow that is 6.0. Dot one here on the Express Prime. You can see my Flappy Bird skills here in this little nugget in the marshmallow. Pretty good. Got a score of zero. And we do have some Samsung special features such as Ultra Power Saving Mode and Power Saving Mode. We'll talk more about that later. And there's some unique tweaks here in the device itself, such as let's go over and find what else we have here, such as these wallpapers. You get these Samsung Galaxy S7 like wallpapers, which is really nice. This is the more modern Samsung UX user interface here. You can also expect some AT&T bundled software here with the Samsung Galaxy Express Prime. As you can see, all of these applications can be turned off, but they cannot be you know, totally in, uninstalled from the device itself. And um, you do also have some core Samsung apps here, but it's nothing too, you know, heavy on this device. So you do have a few extra apps such as Direct TV and Games. So there is a little bit of boatware, but overall I would say the system UI is pretty clean and stable. Also, there are some included Samsung features within this device. As you can see, we're going to go over and you're going to find some advanced features here. We do have one-handed operation for the Express Prime here, which allows you to reduce the screen size and have one-handed input. We also do have quick launch camera, so if I double tap the home button, we can go directly into the camera itself here. And um, we do have smart alert as well, so you can vibrate when you pick up the device for messages and easy mute to you know silence calls when they are coming in. So that's cool there. Also, there is a few things here in the notification tray as we talked about earlier. And overall, that's about it. It's a pretty clean version of TouchWiz here. There are some Samsung ringtones and you know your typical Samsung stuff of the past, but overall, pretty clean operating system. In terms of the specification, you do have a 1.3 gigahertz Exynos 3475 CPU with an Mali T720 GPU, and we do have 1.5 gigabytes of RAM here on the J3 slash Express Prime. Taking a closer look at that display of the Galaxy Express Prime, that 5 inch 1280 by 720 p HD, we do have an outdoors mode which makes it very easy to read the screen outside. You know, despite the fact that this is a Super AMOLED screen and the text was pretty sharp, although I did see a bit of jaggy edges around the edges of the text itself, the screen was pretty enjoyable at 303 pixels per inch and I could say it's very similar to something like we used to have on our Samsung Galaxy S3 for the time I didn't see anybody complaining and we do have all those modes that you usually get in Samsung devices. Getting into the storage of the Galaxy Express Prime, you are going to find yourself 16 gigabytes on this model, but it did only have 10.18 gigabytes out of the box, so that's the real storage space you're going to get. And I think it's plenty enough for your applications along with that 128 gigabyte expandable. So this is a plus here on the storage itself. Now let's get into the ADD test or, you know, the app switching test where we test the speed of the application open time. So let's go into calculator. Let's come back. Let's go into calendar. Let's come back out. Let's go into clock. 
let's come back out let's go into settings and let's come back out you could see that the device does perform quite well here although I did find it to be a little bit slower than other devices with two gigabytes of RAM it was okay decent but it was nothing that was gonna blow anybody's socks off and overall the performance was just you know good but not great although it was stable not too many lags or glitches no problems in that front of the device you can see we can go into YouTube we're gonna come back out let's go into the internet browser and let's go to amazon.com and see how fast it opens a web page here now this is based on your internet connection although it should be pretty good if you have a decent internet connection now let's go into the multitasking and see how it goes into the switching so let's go into calculator let's come back out let's go into Amazon let's come back out let's go into YouTube let's come back out and uh, let's go into Pi Geek and you can see it does go into those apps pretty quickly so performance overall I hope this is showing you it's going to be enjoyable nonetheless just not an amazingly quick speeds but overall the general UI functions as it should Hopping into the camera of this device, I'm going to double click that home button and you can see that this is a pretty simple, dead simple UI. You do have a few effects here on the Express Prime and uh, you can see just four. You do have some timer modes all the way up to 10 seconds. You do have flash, auto, on and off and you are able to change your aspect ratios. You can see all of them right there here for the rear camera you could do this for the front as well so if you go into settings you can see there's a few settings grid line location tags review pictures quick launch shutter sounds volume key functions and things of that nature over here it's a dead simple click and fire you can see really simple very similar to what you're gonna get on an iPhone so you see the modes you're gonna see auto pro mode and this is a very clean simple to use panoramic mode right here going over to the mode we're gonna go into continuous shot which is like burst mode for the iPhone where it continuously fires shots multiple at a time beauty face for all of you who don't you know enjoy the way your face looks sound shot and audio and we do have sports modes right here and uh, you can see hello there's the front facing camera you could switch right there and it's a dead simple point and record video as well and you can also take pictures while you are shooting the video here now let's get into the samples All right guys, so this is the 720p HD recording on the Samsung Galaxy Express Prime. We're gonna walk down here just a little bit to give you a little bit of a shake test basically. Um, this does not have optical image stabilization. This does have just electronic stabilization. So nothing too big, but you can see the water here. This is HD, it does not go in full HD here. So this is the best quality you're gonna get in the daytime on a nice cloudy slash sunny day here. Let's go in on the green a little bit so you can just see the trees right there. You can see what you're going to get. It's not the best in the world, but it's something nonetheless. So what do you guys think of this front-facing camera quality here on the Galaxy Express Prime? What do you guys think of it? Let me know down below in the comments. In terms of gaming, we're not going to play any games, but the phone had no problems playing these casual games such as Need for Speed, Low Limits, Temple Run, and Alto's Adventure. So gaming should perform just fine for you here on the Express 3 unless you're doing heavy gaming. What about call quality here on the Express Prime? And I can tell you, call quality has been just fine. Callers said they heard me fine, and I heard them fine. And the speakerphone on this phone was actually quite good, although not impressive. It was still quite good here for the Galaxy Express Prime. So call quality should be fine as long as your signal strength is great. Now let's get into my negative aspects of the phones. These are the few gripes that I have with it. That camera on the back is kind of unacceptable for this price range. You know, the ZT Z Max 2 has a 8 megapixel, this has a 5 megapixel, and it's a cheaper device. That's why I think 
that. Also, another negative device is that it's just not the quickest of the Samsungs I've seen in the past. Even the Express 3 felt a little bit snappier than this, and that's probably because of the lower resolution screen and the same processor. This front-facing camera also is quite low resolution, but you know what? We're nitpicking now, and that slippery back is, you know, it's just slippery. We dropped it earlier in the video, and if you don't hold on to this phone, you will drop this phone unless you get a case for this device. But overall, it's a pretty sleek design, you know. Overall, it's not too shabby, and I don't have too many more negatives to say than that, besides that these buttons at the bottom do not light up, and, you know, they could have put that in there as well. Now, let's get into the positive aspects of the device. I can tell you that I love the curvature design here. It just curves and wraps into your hand, even if it's slippery. Also, that screen on the front of this device is just beautiful, and it gets really bright outdoors, and one of the brightest screens, in fact, that I've ever seen outdoors in terms of readability. It's very easy to read in the sun, very similar to those older Lumia devices with those sun readability modes. Also, I do like the way the icons are designed and Samsung's new stable user interface. It's very modern, very clean, and offers some great usability features that doesn't confuse the user too much here in Android Marshmallow 6.0.1. So those are my positive aspects of the device here. Now getting into battery life, I can tell you the battery life on this phone has been just awesome with that 2600 milliamp hour battery on a 5 inch screen. It's been really good with the dark blacks that save batteries from Super AMOLED. And you also get those, you know, ultra power saving modes and the regular power saving mode here on the Galaxy Express Prime, making this for one champ in the battery department. So that's a thumbs up there. So that's pretty much going to wrap this review up. Who is this device for? Well, this device is for anybody who wants to get a Samsung device with a modern, clean UI at an affordable price, but wants HD resolution and doesn't like the Express 3. This can also be for somebody who's, you know, waiting to get an S7. They just need something to hold them over. But I wouldn't recommend this phone to anybody who wants a long-term, you know, solid, amazing phone because it's just not an amazing phone. And there's a lot of competition in the budget arena. What are your thoughts on this device? Drop those down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this all. And I will catch you guys in the next episode. Be sure to be well and peace.